So in today's video, I'm gonna help you out with purchasing your next gaming headset. And no, I'm not gonna be reviewing a headset here, but we're gonna be talking about the process of picking out a headset. Pretty much exactly what I do when I review products as well. We'll talk about that comfort, the build, features and functions, what separates the headsets, what's gonna make them different, and what's gonna suit you better, and what you should look out for when making your next headset purchase. And the first and only place we can start is with price. And when we talk about price of gaming headsets, they really fluctuate out there. You can get some down in the ends of like 30 bucks up to $400. And that's really at the core, this video is gonna decipher and really pick that apart and let you know, okay, this is what you're gonna get with the budget, this is what you can get with the high end, what are you looking for? But again, the price really varies when you're shopping for a gaming headset. Now features and functions. And yeah, I'm going that route before comfort or anything. Cause again, when you're looking at price, following that up with features and functions is what's really gonna separate them. And as we look at these right here, we got our high ends over here, Odyssey Maxwell, roughly around 300 to 330 bucks. The Arctic's Nova Pro Wireless, around 350. Then we come over into some budgets with the Turtle Beach and the Razer Black Shark V2Xs, you're talking 30 to 50 bucks. And the one thing you're noticing between both of these right here is you got wired and you have wireless. Even other than that main feature right there that can be that selling point for you is being wired or wireless, which is gonna again separate that price bracket, you also could look at the features and functions packed into these headsets here. Again, talking about the Arctic's Nova Pro wireless, you got noise cancellation, you got Bluetooth, you got a spare battery, you got all the things you can dance around with in this little DAC right here, you know? The Nova or the uh, Maxwell's over, you got planar magnetic drivers, you got the Bluetooth, you got the app you control. We're gonna get into the build of these as well, they're stinking tanks. Coming over here to a wired headset, your budget option being 3.5, where you're gonna plug it into your controller or whatever sound source you have right there, and that's what you're gonna get. Now you can download software, Atmos or Sonic and dabble and tweak with that stuff there, but again, the simplicity, the functionality of it built into it is not there. Again, at the core, you have your headset, you plug it in and that's what you're getting. But that's not saying your wired budget headset is bad by any means, because honestly, a wired connection is pretty much always going to sound better than a wireless connection. Now, this day and age, a lot of these wireless headsets are very, very good. You don't have any delay, no lag, no static or nothing. They're definitely getting very good. But again, a wired connection, you're going right into your source, and that's what you got. That sound coming right to your ears. So when we roll off price and we look at budget, we come to higher end, and there are wireless headsets in the middle that will eliminate some of these extra features and functions here. That's what you need to decide, right? Do you need Bluetooth? Do you need noise cancellation? Do you want app control and be able to tweak everything like that? No? Well, you can come down here to some wireless headsets in the middle, which you'll get around, say, 100 bucks, maybe a little bit more right there, and it'll take some of those out and you'll still get a wireless headset. Maybe you don't need wireless at all. You got your controller, who cares? You take your headset off, you know? You don't need to take your headset to the bathroom with you. A wired headset can pack a serious punch. Now, right along with talking about packing a punch, we gotta talk about my most important topic, as you all know, that being comfort. And this can be a really tough topic right here, which is why I focus so much on it in my videos, right? Because it's really gonna differentiate person to person. Do you wear glasses? Do you have a big head? Do you have more hair? Do you game with a hat on? So on and so forth, right? And looking at, again, a budget headset compared to a wireless headset, the number one thing you're gonna notice is the weight. Now, when we put this on here, now the cable's gonna be kinda hanging off to the side, so we'll take that off. You're getting 230, 228 grams on this fully plastic budget gaming headset. Slapping a wireless headset on here, we're getting 336. Now, Steel Series is one of the betters out here, right? But say if we come over here to say something like the Odyssey Maxwells and slap these on, we're getting 492 grams. That's big time, right? Do you want this big, heavy headset hanging on your head for a long game session, 
or do you want it a little bit more lightweight? And when you're looking at, again, a budget headset, a lot of them are gonna be primarily all plastic. When you snap it up and you can break this apart into multiple headsets, there's a few things you should really look for in your gaming headset as far as comfort. And number one should be your ear pads right here. Looking at both of these headsets, the budget one or the higher end one, they have these fully pleather ear pads. You wanna look at the depth, the size, cause you don't want your ears getting pinched in there. But again, with them being fully pleather, your ears get really spicy with these. So again, they play a role in the sound, which we'll talk about later on as far as locking that sound in. But as far as comfort, you're just gonna wanna let your ears breathe after a while. Now, of course, you all know me, I plug Wicked Cushions all the time. This is not a sponsored plug or anything. Wicked Cushions doesn't know about this. This is just my passion and you all know that. Now they make universal pads. As you can see right here, you got the lip, bam, you can just pretty much rip off the other pad. Now you don't mess with this, it's not damaging, still put it back on, but as you see, they apply the exact same way. Now, luckily with say a pad like the uh, Nova Pros or even the Odysseys or something like that, where they clip off with their bracket, Wicked Cushions is now implementing the brackets as well. So you can see exactly like stock right there, full foam all around it to prevent any of that vibration or anything, and they attach the exact same way. So again, no fluff. I know this may look like a sponsored plug or something, but it's not. Yeah, I do have affiliate links right down in the description, so make sure to click on that if you're looking at shopping for some of these, but Wicked Cushions knows nothing about this. This is not sponsored. It's something I swear by, because it will transform, again, even a budget headset or a higher end headset and absolutely make them game changing as far as comfort. Now, almost as important, if not more important as the ear pads is adjustability and kicking it off with the headband. Take a look at our budget option here. We just have that little pad right up there, not really plush, it kind of gives way and just hits the plastic. That's all you have. Coming over here to the Steel Series, you got that headband, just kind of floats on your head. Really, really nice. The floating headband is one of my favorite. Again, you have that over here in the Odysseys as well, but that's not saying you need the floating headband because when we look at the razors over here, look at that one. Again, as a budget headset, this thing is super plush and very, very stinking cozy. So yeah, headband, very important, but again, adjustability. As you look at this, full swivel. You all hear me talk about swivel all the time. It's something that I think headsets need. And why do I say you need that? Well, when you take your headset and you put it on your head, think the Logitech G Pros or HyperX Clouds, something like that. When you put them on, if they don't adjust, they're not gonna form into the shape of your head. So if I twist around, you're probably rough to hear me. But again, if there's no swivel, maybe it's gonna sit like that. You're gonna have that gap back there. And that's gonna create a little more pressure up here along with a little bit of sound bleed out of that gap out of the back, which we'll talk about in sound. But again, most importantly is that swivel is gonna let that kind of swivel back right there and really conform to your head shape. Yours may swoop back more or less, or again, more hair, so on and so forth. Or with the glasses, it's gonna alleviate that pressure right on that frame, letting it swivel back instead of just resting up there. And again, yeah, you can get that on budget headsets as well. So this is a very big key feature I really think you should keep on the top of your list. Other than that, adjustability. Do you have that standard adjustability in the arm right here? As you see, SteelSeer is now implemented there before you could only adjust the headband. And as you see, you can still adjust the headband on the Steel Series, but bringing back out the Maxwells, they kind of went the old Steel Series route where you can only adjust it on the headband right there. You don't have a ton of adjustability within this. Now where this can get a little bit confusing is when we take a look at something like the Black Sharks over here. Well, you got these weird deals with the metal coming out right there. They slide in and out on those hinges. You don't have any swivel, but since they're on both of those hinges, you still get that adjustability as you're seeing right there. So again, at the core, that's what I'm stating. You really gotta see how is that headset adjusting, right? No headband adjustment, no swivel, but you still have quite a bit of adjustability. Look how big that headset just got and look how easy those ear pads move. So as far as comfort, again, this is gonna be different for everybody. If I say something stinking cozy, it may be the complete opposite for you. And you really need to decipher, well, what do I put on? What kind of headsets have I used before? And what features are they packing? 
Maybe I can relate that to say, if I'm looking at the new Maxwell, what does that really do right there? Maybe the lack of adjustment over here is gonna ruin us or that weight is gonna ruin it. As far as the pads, we have that easy fix right there. But again, comfort, you can get an absolutely phenomenal, the Black Sharks, hands down stinking cozy for a budget headset over here. Again, right in line with some of the higher end ones, but you gotta pick that apart. The adjustability, the ear pads, the weight is a big one right there. And then you can decide, okay, that's gonna work out for me or not. Now going right in line right here, we've talked about price, we've talked about features and functions, we've talked about comfort, we have to go right into the build. And looking at all these headsets we have right here, you can see we have a variety of builds. Talking about our budget option, being fully plastic here. You kind of twist it out, stretch it up. It's kind of like, okay, I'm getting a little bit worried, right? But following up with maybe a midline budget headset, the Logitech G Pros, you got metal forks right here. This thing is an absolute tank. I can just twist it up with no fear whatsoever. Going into our higher end Odyssey Maxwells, I mean, these suckers are all metal. You know, they are absolute solid built headset here. Coming into Steel Series, again, watching some reviews and talk about them, you can hear since they're on that one hinge, well, you can get a little bit of wobble right there. They're never broken on me, they have on other people. But again, I really think looking at little tidbits like that across build of each headset is really gonna separate them. Now, as you all see me stretching out headsets in my videos and twisting them up and everything, no, I don't think you're gonna be here twisting them up like this, like a pretzel. I don't think that. What I do and why I do that in my videos is I wanna go like this and if my headset snaps, you're gonna know, okay, you know, that hinge right there is gonna be a little bit weak, you know, or ah, that bracket's a little bit weak right there. That's what I do. I'm testing products, right? I don't use this headset for a year like you may use. I use it for a month, you know, something like that. And then I wanna really stress it up and see where those weak points are to help you out. But when you look at a higher end headset to a budget headset, that's a big area where it's gonna separate them right there. Again, talking about a fully plastic budget $30 headset to a $300 headset with metal components and really just reinforced in areas. That's almost as big as a differentiating area as features and functions, talking wired and wireless and Bluetooth and all this other stuff is build. You're really gonna see a budget headset not as a piece of junk, but you're gonna see it built a lot less quality compared to a higher end headset. But honestly, at the end of the day, if you're careful with your stuff, it really doesn't matter, right? But a topic that does really matter is sound. And why the heck do I save this for last? Why would I put, I put this at the beginning? Well, I really don't think sound could be at the beginning. If you think about everything else we talked about, a lot of that stuff as a consumer as a user, that stuff I think is more important because you want that product in your hand, right? You want it to do what you want it to do, being comfort, features and functions, solid products, so on and so forth. How much money do you have to spend, right? That All of that leads up to the sound and then you can break it apart. If you're looking at a budget headset, well, pick apart those budget headsets as far as sound. Higher end, pick them apart that way. Hopefully that makes sense. Cause again, all that other stuff I truly do think is more important than jumping right into sound. I'm not saying sound isn't important at all. It's a little confusing, but I hope you guys are catching my jive right here, right? And this can get very confusing. When you're looking at a budget headset, again, the Black Sharks with the Triforce drivers, really awesome separation, 50 millimeter, so on and so forth. It's just an awesome sounding headset. Now, hold on a second. This caught my eye down here. You can really get tricked into some goofy marketing. The Turtle Beach is over here, built for Battle Royale. How the heck is this headset built for Battle Royale? I think a lot of this goofy marketing, noise cancellation is something big right now, which I think is just hocus pocus. I think it's ridiculous. 7.1, um, you know, a lot of software tweaking these headsets, I think is hocus pocus, just along with putting built for Battle Royale because it's popular right now. A lot of people think 7.1 or something like that is gonna give you an advantage in an FPS game. Well, it's really not. All it does is jack with your sounds, reduce the bass up here, pull out the highs over here and reduce some of these sounds, so on and so forth. Can it be fun to play with that stuff? Yes. Is it gonna give you an advantage? No, but again, you can kind of tweak it to your 
way, kind of just like an EQ. And that's, again, going to separate a higher end or a lower end headset. Because again, a lot of these headsets come with their apps. You can control them right on your phone, right on the amp or DAC right there. You can really tweak them that way. But again, going right along with a budget headset, you're going 3.5. You got Sonic Sound. You got Dolby Atmos. This is on console or PC. And you can still tweak and play with a lot of that stuff. So again, when you're pulling apart the sound, you really got to pull apart what are you looking for in your sound? How much adjustability do you want? And then you can dive even further. 50 millimeter drivers, I notice are always a little bit more crystal clear. 40 millimeter drivers, a little bit more bass heavy. Frequency range, if you catch a lot of these gaming headsets are always 20 to 20, you know? That used to be something back in the days, gaming headsets used to be really bass heavy, especially Turtle Beach and Razer and stuff like that. Now we're getting more into natural sounds. Again, as we're seeing over here with the new Turtle Beaches, the Steel Series, and especially Odyssey. This is where things get pretty weird when you're looking at planar magnetic drivers. And that's where you really gotta dive in and do some research. But as far as sound, that's why in my videos, you catch me really rambling. I'll talk for a long time about sound across multiple games where you get in different sounds, whether it be more bass over here and say Halo or a driving game where you don't want that squeal or that crowd constantly hollering in your ears or an FPS game, right? Are you looking for the highs or the lows or the separation and stuff like that? That's what I look for. You all have heard me before. I'm not really big into specs, numbers, graphs, so on and so forth. That's not me hating on any other method. That's just not my style. I get fed that stuff from companies with marketing material. Give me all the numbers and the graphs, this, that, or the other. But that doesn't really say anything. I want to hear our experience when we're using it. You're playing Call of Duty. I'm playing Call of Duty. Tell me about it. What are you hearing? What's it sounding like in this situation? And that's going to pick it apart. And I think the only way you can really get that, like a lot of the other stuff, you can just look at a product page and kind of see it and pick it apart. Okay, it's got this, it's got that. Look at the pictures and you're pretty much good to go. But as far as sound, you need to really, again, listen to that description of someone talking about the sound and you need to pick it apart. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. No, 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 no. I play a different style of game. I kind of want that over there. Sound is a tough one. And again, something you really need to absorb in to figure out what you're looking for. You know one area I almost forgot to talk about? Microphone. But is it that important? Me personally, I don't use my built-in microphones on my headsets. I use a standalone one plugged into USB, my Elgato Wave. And if you're on PC, that's what I recommend you doing as well. Now, headsets are getting phenomenal with their microphones. This new Razer Black Shark uh, V2 or whatever it is, the 2023 version, this microphone is amazing. It is so good. You know, that's without any tweaking or anything like that. So, again, they're coming a long way right now, but you're never going to get as good as a dedicated microphone. And that's the route I recommend. So, me personally, microphone never, ever matters to me because I just about never, ever use them unless I'm testing them. But if it is a feature that matters to you, the only way to really pick this apart is you have to pop into a video and just listen to it and see if that's what you're gonna get. Now, one area I wanna advise you to just kinda keep an eye out for when you're shopping for your headset, watching review videos, hopefully the person's breaking down to you how they're testing it. No software, no tweaking, straight plugged and play, recorded. Have they already dabbled into the software of the headset and tweaked it right there? Well, that's gonna differentiate it. As far as their room setup, do they have a lot of sound dampening? Do they got a lot of sound morphing within the room to make it sound like a better microphone? A lot of us, as I state in my videos, I don't have any sound dampening, actually, you know what I mean? I got all these things down here that I haven't even put up. They're just sitting down here, you know? So anyways, in here, I have nothing. So you're getting a real core microphone in a standard game room. How is it sounding? So again, uh, whenever you listen to microphone tests and everything, make sure that you're understanding their environment and how they're truly doing that microphone test to get that true user's feedback and experience of the microphone. But at the end of the day, I do recommend you just go with a standalone microphone for sure. Now I want to hear from you all. What is the most important area for a gaming headset? And I know a lot of us instantly, we're going to jump down in the comments and say, but think about it. It's got to be budget first, right? And if you're just passing up the comfort in the bill, I think a lot of you might not be happy with your product. If we really sit back, pick them apart. And again, this is just exactly how I do my reviews when I'm testing products. 
actually, honestly, when I get the product, I take it out and I put it on to see if it's comfortable. That's the first thing I honestly do, right? Because again, if it's not cozy, I'm going to take it right off and I'm just not going to even want to test it. But again, I think if you're shopping a product and you pick it apart in those aspects, you're really going to end up with a product you're happy with. I really do. And on your next purchase, just try that method. And I want to hear what you picked out and what you think about it. But I also want to hear your method on picking out a gaming headset. So all in all, thank you so much for coming by from this. This was a really fun video that's been on my mind for a while. I wanted to help out and hopefully I did right here and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope to catch you in the next video. Bye now. <laughs>